Hi, I'm Alex Rosenthal, and I'm going to do a commentary on this video of my first National Ninja League competition run. Uh, I'm going to analyze this and see what I think I should have done at the time and what I'm capable of doing now that I couldn't do then. This run was about two months ago, uh, and I'm significantly better at Ninja Warrior than I was two months ago. I've been training really hard. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay. So that's Jamie Ron back there. And uh, I was very starstruck when I met him. But anyway. Okay, so I, I made the decision to stop on this block uh, for a second because this uh, this is directly in front of this block. And when you're jumping off of it, you have momentum angling you to the side. And I was worried about making that. At now, I probably wouldn't have done that. I would have saved about a second there. It's not a big deal. Now this one, I was considering walking along the top of it, but getting down to the rails would be hard. Uh, my strategy here was basically go as fast as I can along the rails to this horizontal rail, because that's uh, very stabilizing. Uh, so... It was sort of balancing between uh, the time that I would save from going fast and the risk of falling from going fast. Uh, I really like this strategy. I still use it. It's just sprint to here, set myself, and then sprint to the end. Now, these platforms I went across very slowly. I could have gone faster. Um, this obstacle is actually deceptively difficult. Uh, I, I did it in one swing there. I'm super proud of that. Uh, Jake Murray fell on this. A ton of people fell on this obstacle. It's actually really hard. Um, but, uh, but I got it really efficiently. Uh, I don't think I could have done it any better than that. Uh, here I was fast. I ran directly into the next obstacle, uh, which is good, which is something that I often don't do. Now here, at now I would probably just jump to that hold instead of grabbing it and uh, and then swinging on it, it would have saved me a couple seconds. Here, I did take the one extra swing. I think that's necessary, uh, particularly having swung onto it. If I was running into it, I could have done only one swing. Here, I jumped out on the monkey bars, which is a good strategy, but right here, I took an extra swing. What I should have done is reached out, grabbed the floating board, pulled back, and then swung onto it, and it would have saved me this extra swing right here because the floating board... Uh, would have already been swinging when I was onto it instead of me having to get it going from nothing. That would have saved me a few seconds. That was a good move right there, although I could have probably just done one step in the spider walk. Uh, but still, getting into it, it was efficient. Here, there were people who did this the other way, who grabbed uh, this ball, which is on the uh, left-hand rail with their right hand, and this ball with their left hand. That may be easier, I don't know, but I, I was fine doing it... Uh, the intuitive way, uh, right hand on the right ball, left hand on the left one. Uh, that was an efficient dish I'm proud of that. Now right here, I was getting pretty out of breath. Um, and earlier, Austin Gray, who won this competition, he took a really long rest here, uh, and it was probably a good idea, but I did not take much of a rest. Even though I was out of breath, I went right into it. Uh, this move... That's a really efficient move. That is the most efficient way to do this. Uh, Austin Gray did this crazy move where before making the salmon ladder transfer, he just built up some momentum and swung directly to this floating board. Um, that is an insane move, but it's honestly not much faster than the immediate transfer, take one swing here, and then go to the floating board. Uh, there were also people who fell on this floating board. You had to get um, grab the sides because if you grab the back, uh, it would tilt. You can see when I grab it, it's really unstable. It Good tilts job, quite a lot. Uh, Lauren Ball fell on this because he grabbed the back. So I think this is as efficient as I could have done that. However, I did not need to take that swing. Uh, I was playing it very safe. I should not have done that. I would have saved myself a few seconds, and I would have saved myself energy if I just gotten off there. Now, this move, again, I'm playing it safe. I could have jumped directly to the trampoline, uh, but I was worried about hitting it wrong and not being able to get up to this ladder, so I did 
uh, I pushed it up and jumped out to the last rung. That's a move I'd done before because I trained at this gym uh, and the ladder had been up before. So I think now I'm more confident on trampolines. I would have just jumped for it. But at the skill level that I was then, I think that was a smart move. Now here, I'm, I'm pretty slow on this ladder, uh, and I take an extra swing here, and that's a really bad decision. I did not need that. I had the momentum. I was worried because this, this landing platform is very narrow, uh, and I was worried about falling off to the side, but I, I wouldn't have. It was not a difficult move. I should have immediately gone and not taken an extra swing. Now at this point, my grip is really burning. Uh, it's, it's killing me. I do not have great grip endurance. I do not have great cardio endurance. I'm out of breath and my arms are really tired. Uh, my grip endurance has improved somewhat since then. Uh, my cardio really not at all. Uh, it's, it's my biggest weakness and I have to work on it. But anyway, I was careful there, uh, because if you drop these rings, you, uh, you're not allowed to pick them up again. You're just screwed. Uh, you need them for a later obstacle. Uh, I should have kicked off harder from this. Uh, it would have saved me time and energy uh, climbing around the box if I had just kicked and, and grabbed here the first time instead of over here. But it worked. I got through it. Here, uh, Jamie, Jamie Ron just told me to catch my breath as my go. That is really good advice. Um, I tried to do it. Um, I was really scared of the slack line. I'm much less scared of the slack line now. I would have just immediately gone, but luckily you could touch those pillars, so... There was, there was no reason to take that time uh, and be so cautious getting onto the slack line. I could have saved myself a couple seconds. Now here, what I should have done is set down the rings, uh, massage my forearms, taken a good rest, and then gone for this. But you notice I'm not really doing that. What I'm doing is looking up at this and thinking, oh my god, it hurts, my arms are so dead, I don't want to do this, instead of resting, recovering, taking a minute. Uh... So I did take time here, but I didn't use the time effectively to really recover. I'm still breathing hard. My arms are still really pumped. I did not, you know, work out the pump or sit down or anything. Uh, I didn't use this rest effectively. I just wasted time. Now here, uh, that miss, I mean, it was avoidable, but it's not, it wasn't a mental error and it wasn't that I couldn't do that move. I was just tired. I put an amount of power in that would normally have done that, but I was so tired that less power came out than I was expecting, and I just missed that, but I stayed calm. Uh, I didn't flail around fl uh, frantically. I just let my momentum turn me and got the peg anyway. Uh, you know, I wish I hadn't made the mistake, but I dealt with making the mistake very well. Uh, but for the rest of this, I was very cautious. You see me taking extra swings here. Uh, I'm going really slow instead of just continuously going through. Uh, that was a second or two hanging that I could have taken off. Now here, this is my first really major mistake. Um, so, there, this is a six minute time limit uh, on the course, and this obstacle, only Austin Gray had cleared so far. And I should have realized this is a really, really hard obstacle. Very few people are going to clear it. I have a lot of time. I should just take it and rest and work the, uh, the pump out of my forearms and then go for it. But instead, I wanted to clear this obstacle and future obstacles, and I didn't want to time out on the next obstacle, so I went into this way too soon. Uh, and that was a very bad decision. Um, and I ended up falling on this obstacle. I... Probably couldn't have cleared it even if I'd rested, but I would have had a much better shot at clearing it. Uh, there, I'm trying to work the pump out of my forearms. I'm not doing a very good job. So, 435. It was a six-minute course. I could have waited for about 40 seconds and had time to clear this obstacle and potentially cleared it. Um, I probably wouldn't have then. I would now. My grip endurance is better. But... I would have had a shot at clearing it if I just rested 45 seconds, but I went right into it, hoping to clear this and clear future obstacles. I should have realized I was not going to clear this obstacle without rest and just taken the rest and tried to clear this one instead of trying to get multiple obstacles farther in the course when there's almost no way I was going to clear this. So, this obstacle is really tough. 
This this bar right here, it spins, uh, and you'll see. I grab it with my left hand, and then I grab it with my right, and I tried to go up with my left hand, and as I pulled my left hand out from under my right, my right did not get a good grip, and I spun out. Um, I still probably would have failed, because you had to grab these spinning doorknobs, which are really tough to grab, which only uh, Austin Gray and one other person actually successfully hung on to. And then you have to make it up to this cliffhanger and transfer seven feet to another cliffhanger on the, uh, the traverse box where the monkey bars are. And that is a crazy move. Only Austin Gray made that move. Uh, I ended up in fourth place on this run, which I'm super happy about. This was my first uh, NNL competition. I did really, really well, I think, considering uh, how sh how uh, little time I'd been training for this. I'd only been training for four months. This was in November, and I started... Uh, I, I went to an injury gym for the very first time in July and started taking it seriously in August. So I am really proud of how I did, but I could have done better at the time. There, there are several times that I could have taken off time, and... I was in fourth place by 20 seconds. Uh, I probably could have taken 20 seconds off of this course up to this point had I not made a couple of mistakes, had I not taken those extra swings. I probably could have gotten third place and won money and qualified for National Ninja League finals at this competition. I ended up qualifying later at another competition, but it was, a, it was not a sure thing. Uh, so... I feel like I could have done better. I could definitely do better now. Now I think I probably could clear this obstacle and get up the warp wall, which is the next obstacle, and I would have fallen on the obstacle after that, probably, if I ran this course right now. But still, I'm super proud of myself. I got a high five from Jamie, which is nice. I was I was very starstruck when I met Jamie Ron, uh, and I've trained with him a lot, and he is phenomenal. He's such an inspiration. But... Anyway, yeah, this was a really fun course. I'm really proud of how I did on it, but you can always improve. Uh, and there are definitely places where I could have done better. Uh, if you want to see the, the whole run not uh, paused all the time and without my commentary, uh, a link will be in the description.